Hello Acolytes and welcome back to another video. My name is Afterplague and today we are working on a new monthly art challenge. This is Funguary, as in fungus and February. Now I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I love fungi. So as soon as I saw this challenge, I absolutely had to participate. So today's species is the elegant blue webcap. The elegant blue webcap is a common species of fungus often found growing in the eucalypt forests in southern Australia. The webcap in its name identifies it as a fungi with a cortina, which is a partial veil of a cobweb-like substance that covers and protects the spore-bearing surface, hence webcap. As the mushroom matures, the cortina will dissolve. Like many fungi, the elegant blue webcap will grow in a convex shape at first, but as it grows, it will flatten and possibly turn up into a concave shape. Its deep indigo coloring will also pale with age, eventually turning into a rusty brown. The cap of the mushroom is viscid or slimy, but it dries with age as well. Notably, the very tip of the mushroom cap, referred to as an umbo, is greenish yellow in most mature specimens. This fungus is considered common and is sited both singly and in groups in temperate Australian woodlands. As far as designing the character goes, because it's an elegant blue web cap, I really wanted to put her in this very slinky, elegant evening gown. And I thought that the shape of something that was tight to the body would mimic the stem of the mushroom, how it's got like this large silhouetted shape on top of her hat, and then the more slender shape of the stem. All of the colors in this illustration were pulled directly from the photos of the mushrooms that you can see I'm using as references. And I really wanted the character herself to look like the embodiment of this mushroom. So of course I wanted to make the cap of the mushroom look viscid and slimy. I wanted to make the stem look dry and I wanted to incorporate this blue color in many places, but especially in where it would be on the fungus, the cap. I viewed this fungus as sort of more of a mature fungus. So I gave her more of an adult looking face. To me, she looks like she could be in her mid thirties. Uh, very much a, a distinguished, established woman. That was the vibe that I was going with for her. And I think that everything from her posing to her facial expression really brings that forward. I also experimented with a bunch of brushes that had really cool textures to create this striping on the cap of the mushroom, as well as texture on the quote unquote stem, her dress. Um, and so with all of that, this is the elegant blue web cap, day one of Funguary. For day two of Funguary, we'll be discussing the Pixie Cup Lichen. Pixie Cup Lichen are widely distributed across the Northern Hemisphere and can usually be found growing on rocks or stones. Lichens are actually two symbiotic organisms. The fungus provides the structure and creates a mini ecosystem that's inhabited by a colony of algae or bacteria. The algae performs photosynthesis and the fungus draws nutrients from the soil. Lichens are incredibly sturdy. They propagate when trampled, as each fragment has the potential to become a new lichen. Some can even endure temperatures below negative 60 degrees Celsius. Because of their hardiness to cold climates, lichens are the primary food source for reindeer and caribou. Lichens also grow extremely slowly, but they have incredible longevity. Some lichens are believed to be over 4,500 years old. Humans also use lichens to extract antibiotic compounds. For the design of the pixie cup lichen, I wanted to have more of an upbeat energy than the elegant blue web cap. So I made her look like she was more of a party girl, definitely more energy in her pose and a little bit more carefree. I also wanted to imply that she was shorter than the elegant blue web cap because pixie cup lichen are quite small. Of course, to imply that she is actually a pixie, I decided to give her these big, beautiful wings and a sort of a tongue in cheek thing. I gave her a pixie cut hairstyle. I incorporated the actual lichen in this piece as the cup that the pixie was actually drinking out of. Very literal, but I think it's a fun interpretation. I also wanted to give her elements of being a creature of the forest, so I added these roses and leaves onto her dress design and her shoes to imply that she is a very natural sort of creature. I thought this fun little napkin fold dress added to that high energy, it sort of makes her look youthful and joyous and adds to the movement of this pose. Again, all of the colors are drawn directly, color picked directly from the lichens. So hopefully she invokes that feeling of the lichen. 
and I wanted to make her wings look sparkly and sort of ephemeral. So that is day two of Funguary, the pixie cup lichen. For day three of Funguary, the species that we'll be looking at is the magpie ink cap. Now, ink caps are actually my favorite kind of mushroom. I find them so fascinating, and so I was really, really excited to learn more about them. The magpie ink cap is considered an uncommon fungus, and it can be found growing primarily in alkaline soil throughout Europe and parts of North America. They are usually found solo, but sometimes, if you're lucky, you can find them in small groups, referred to as parliaments by hobby mycologists, because they're magpies. Isn't that cute? <laughs> The ink cap gets its name from the unique white spots on its black cap and the black liquid that drips from its rim. That's the ink part. This occurs because the gills of the mushroom, the underside, deliquesce. This is a process in which decomposition liquefies the gills by pulling moisture from the air. The gills start out a gentle pink and then they will turn to gray, to brown, until becoming black and melting. As with other species of ink cap, this process is meant to help the spores disperse in areas with wetter climates. Magpie ink caps are also inedible, as they are poisonous, so do not eat the forbidden gusher. <laughs> For the design, I thought it would be really interesting to have this character with dark skin wearing white tights, like the white of the stem of the ink cap. So I drew this dark skin character and used the cap of the mushroom as a skirt. I love love the shape of the skirt. I love how frilly it looks and I love the ink dripping off of the sides of it. I think I would love to wear this outfit in real life, honestly. <laughs> and then of course I added the frills on top of the ink cap and carried that design motif up through the top to the bralette that she's wearing. I also thought it would be really interesting to add a colored lighting on this image as my favorite image of the ink cap was the one with a blue lighting coming from the side. So this character out of all of them has the most unique lighting scenario. To make the tights look transparent, I added her color, her skin color underneath, the color of the stem of the mushroom on top, and then lightly erased to imply that the tights are transparent. I also wanted to add a lot of texture to this, the, the cap of this mushroom, so you can see that there are multiple layers of lines and hatching to imply that the top of this fungus has texture. To contrast with the cooler highlight, I added a warmer shadow. Um, to finalize this illustration. So that is day three, magpie ink cap. Day four is an insanely cool fungus. It's so cool. It's called the cornflower bolet. Uh, this fungus is primarily found growing in sandy soil throughout Asia, Australia, North America, and Europe. And in America, they're primarily found east of the Rocky Mountains. And excitingly for me, they can also be found in Florida because I live there and I would love to see one of these. The cap of this mushroom is dry and velvety and it comes in shades of yellow or ochre. The coolest thing about this mushroom though, honestly, it's so cool, is what happens when you cut it open. Initially, the inner flesh of the mushroom is white, but upon contact with the air, it instantly turns bright blue. There are some more var rare variations as well that turn blue-green or like a deep violet color. This occurs because of the oxidation of a chemical in the mushroom flesh called gyrocyanin. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. I swear to God, I looked it up. I couldn't find anything. Gyrocyanin. <laughs> also, fun fact about this mushroom, cornflower bolets are edible and are reportedly absolutely delicious. They're described as having a very rich flavor with hints of nuttiness. So I just had to somehow show in my illustration the, the both the exterior of this mushroom and what happens when you cut it open. So I decided to do this sort of skeleton girl who has like these chunks taken out of her. And in the areas where you can see her bone, you can see that bright blue cornflower bolet texture. Ugh, it's so beautiful. I cannot get over this mushroom. I smacked my microphone. I'm so excited. <laughs> Genuinely, I, I really can't get over how absolutely rad this fungus is. But I was trying to show the sort of two-toned nature of it with this like beautiful spotted cap. I added this lovely texture to her hair. Um, and then you can see the inner texture 
of the cornflower bolette. I also tried to add a lot of texture because you can see in the cut up mushroom, the variations in color from light blue to dark blue, how the inner and outer are different colors. So I spent a long time trying to make that seem dimensional and trying to make it seem like the edges were actually cut, that kind of thing. Uh, and I think it turned out really wonderfully. I also, at the end of this illustration, added some sort of, uh, not ink, because it wouldn't be ink, but drips from the blue to color the, the orange of her skin as well. So yes, that is day four cornflower bolet. I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get a closer look at these, you can follow me on my Instagram or my Twitter where I'll be posting them every single day of February, hopefully. If you would like to see stickers of these <laughs> illustrations, please let me know because I would love, love, love to make stickers of these. Follow me on all my social media. I am After Plague on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, and After underscore Plague on Twitter. Thank you again, and I hope you survive this post-plague world.